You must have heard in the news that Chandrayaan-3 is scheduled to land on the moon on August 23, 2023 at 6.4 p.m. Indian Standard Time. This is actually an approximate time and the actual landing time may vary depending on the progress of the mission. As you may know, Chandrayaan-3 successfully entered the lunar orbit on August 5th, 2023. Since then, it has undergone a series of revolutions around the moon to gradually reduce its altitude and prepare for a soft landing. And always remember, a spacecraft in a low lunar orbit will complete one orbit in much less time when compared to a spacecraft in a higher lunar orbit, which may take a few days. Chandrayaan-3 entered its final lunar orbit on August 16th. The maneuver was performed at 8.30 am Indian Standard Time, which has put the spacecraft in the lower orbit of the moon. This is the lowest orbit that the spacecraft reached before separating the lander from the propulsion module. The lander module then underwent a series of deboosting maneuvers to lower its orbit. The first deboosting maneuver was performed on August 18, 2023. The second and final deboosting maneuver was performed yesterday, that is on August 20. This maneuver reduced the lander module's orbit to 25 km into 134 km. In other words, the lander module is much closer to the moon. After this, the lander module will then enter a powered descent phase. Now, what is a powered descent phase? It is the final phase of a spacecraft's journey to a planetary surface. During this phase, the spacecraft uses its own engines to slow down and land safely on the lunar surface. In case you have a question, how will the lander module switch on its engines? The engines of the Chandrayaan-3 lander will be switched on automatically. The lander has a sophisticated guidance, navigation and control system, that is GNC system, that will take care of all the necessary maneuvers including power, descent and landing. The GNC system will use a variety of sensors to gather information about the lander's position, velocity and altitude. This information will be used to calculate the necessary thrust commands to keep the lander on course. The sensors will also measure the lander's altitude and velocity. The inbuilt software will use this information to calculate the lander's position and velocity from the moon and then command the engines to switch on. Although I don't have the exact data as to how much time will it take for the Vikram lander to land on the moon after the engines are switched on, because the engines will be fired in a series of small bursts for slowing down the lander, but on a rough scale it will take a few minutes. ISRO will monitor the progress of the landing from Earth, but they will not have any direct control over the lander. The GNC system will be fully autonomous and it will be responsible for all aspects of the landing. Now, allowing the spacecraft's own GNC system to handle the landing is much better as it can react much faster to unexpected events than a human operating it from Earth. So this is the challenging part. And then you must have also heard about Russia's Luna 25 lander that was supposed to land before India's Vikram lander. So what happened is that on Saturday, August 19th, Russia's Luna 25 lander crashed on the moon. It was supposed to land on the moon's south pole similar to India's location. But then the spacecraft lost contact with ground control about 12 hours before the planned landing and it crashed on the moon's surface. From this situation, we learn that rushing through tasks often doesn't lead to favorable outcomes. Success tends to follow when work is done with careful attention and a peaceful approach. And then it has also come in the news that the United States Space Agency, NASA, and the European Space Agency will support the Indian Space Agency during the moon landing on August 23rd. NASA is helping ISRO in providing ground station support to receive and transmit data from the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. The European Space Agency is providing the use of its S-Track network of ground stations to track and monitor the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft in lunar orbit. The European Space Agency has a 15-meter antenna at a place called Kourou in the French Guiana and they also have a 32-meter antenna belonging to Goonhilly Earth Station in United Kingdom. So these are the two stations that were selected for support based on the technical capabilities, monitoring and providing visuals of the Chandrayaan-3 satellite in lunar orbit. These two stations have been communicating with the Chandrayaan-3 mission on a regular basis and providing a complete communication channel between the mission operations team in Bengaluru and the Chandrayaan-3 satellite. Now on 23rd August, that is on landing day, the European Space Agency's 35-meter deep space antenna in New Norcia, Australia which is the third ground station in the S-Track network, has been set up to track and communicate with the lander module during the lunar descent phase. 
ISRO, NASA and ESA use a variety of methods to connect their computers and share ports to ensure that they can communicate effectively and securely. This includes using dedicated lines, virtual private networks and other secure methods. They are also members of several international space organizations such as the International Telecommunication Union ITU and the Committee on Space Research COSPA. Now these organizations provide shared networks that can be used by member countries to communicate with the spacecraft. Of course, member countries have to pay money, it's not free of cost. ITU regulates the use of radio frequencies and satellite orbits, which member countries can use for communicating with the spacecraft. Likewise, COSPA provides shared networks to exchange data and information about space research among member countries. So, member countries have to pay a fee for using these services. And if you see it is normal and it is obvious because this money is used to cover the cost of operating and maintaining these shared networks hardware and software. So this was a quick update on India's lunar mission Chandrayaan 3. Let's see what happens on 23rd August. Although the Indian Space Agency is confident and so am I. So let's hope for its great success. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.